Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Alex Reynolds and I am your professor for Sleep and Dreaming for Summer 2020. I thought I would do a welcome video to welcome you to the course since I can't see you face to face and this is a nice way, especially if you haven't had a class with me, to kind of get to know me. So my specialty is sleep uh, and cognition. Currently I'm studying college students sleep and figuring out how to make it better. Um, I have a history of a lot of other different areas, but that's the one that I'm currently studying. And as we get to know each other throughout the semester, I'm sure I will be able to tell you some of the other fun things that I uh, participated in and researched in the past. For this course, um, we will cover a lot of different topics. And um, we're gonna talk about what sleep looks like in the brain, how to get better quality sleep. We're gonna talk about the sleep measurement, we're also going to get into things like dream content, um, theories as to why we dream and does everybody dream and how does that work? So that's gonna be some really fun stuff packed into the semester. We have five weeks to get through an entire semester's worth of work. So it's manageable, but it is a lot of work. You're expected to do at least nine hours or so of uh, work per week. This is, you know, reading, this is uh, studying, um, really trying to understand the material and watching the videos and things like that. So you, um, you know, you are expected to do quite a bit of work um, for this really reduced uh, condensed semester. Now, um, I have for you guys some information about the course. Um, the learning management system that I use is the college's system, which is Moodle. Um, you guys should hopefully be familiar with this system, especially as a lot of classes had moved to online at this point. Um, but if you uh, don't know how to get to it or you've never used it before, you can go to the main college's web page, which is um, the uh, the UVA WISE page, you can go to my.uvawise.edu, which is where you would add your classes in um, it, for the semester. And there are links to Moodle on there. I also sent an email out um, today about the course, or I've sent an email out about the course and I'm sending, I'm going to send another, um, some, some other information. There is a, an app that I use called Remind. You can get it on your phone, you can get it on your iPad. And what it is, is a, a way for me to send you reminders outside of, of me clicking an email and going into Moodle as well. Um, and so you can actually set it up to get sent texts to your phone um, or it can send you uh, reminders on your email. These are things that I might send um, a neat article that I came across. I might send a reminder, hey guys, this is due, make sure you're doing this. Um, it's a good way for me to stay in touch. That's an easy way for me to do it off of my phone so that I can do it while I'm thinking about it. And I don't have to run and grab my laptop um, and send you guys a message. So I highly encourage you to join on that. Um, you can go to the Moodle page and see an announcement. I'm going to have information on there. Um, but also I sent it to you guys in an email. Um, so uh, you will be expected to check Moodle daily. That's because, you, you know, this is such a, a, a fast semester. I also encourage you to, to check your email daily in case there's information I send out. Um, you guys will have that available to you. Um, if you go onto Moodle, you'll notice that I color coded everything by week. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys so that you can see what Moodle looks like. Um, however, hopefully you've reached Moodle in order to get this video. Um, so what we have here is uh, essentially the course, uh, at least the very first week and part of week two loaded as of me making this video right now. I have all the other content up, but I'm still kind of moving things around um, <clears throat> and um, adding a little bit more to the reading list. So if you guys see here, um, the first thing you should see <clears throat> is actually the welcome video. I haven't loaded it yet because I'm doing it right now. So uh, you won't see it on my page, um, but you'll see the course syllabus, the syllabus, the schedule, um, and some rules and, and some resources for you guys to be successful in this course. Um, <clears throat> notice that I have a, um, a spot on here called how to research, how to read a research article. This is a really nice uh, short article to tell you how to get the most out of your research article readings. If you notice, there's going to be uh, a lot of readings in this course, um, and a lot of them get very technical. 
and I don't expect you to word, uh, read every single word and to understand every single tiny thing, but I do want you guys to get the main concepts and the gist out of each of the articles. Um, <clears throat> There's a lot of information here, but there's some really key take home points that I really want you to get. And if you've not taken a class with me, and if you've not taken a class where you've read a lot of research articles, you might feel overwhelmed when you start clicking through because there are a lot of suggested readings um, <clears throat> and a lot of required readings. And what I would suggest to you is to make sure you pace yourself and make sure you think about what are the main sections I can get and read to get the main point. So always start with the introduction. You can jump to the discussion section to see what kind of main points that you can get from the articles. But if you read this how to read a research article paper, it really does a good job of explaining things to you um, in terms of how you can go through an article and get the most out of it. Um, as we move along the Moodle page, you'll see there's a knowledge assessment. I do ask that you take that pre-assessment before you really get into any of the material. It's not for a grade, it's just to kind of see what you know. Um, there's an, a matching post-assessment that you will take at the end of the semester. I just ask that you don't Google anything. The whole point is just to see what you know. And hopefully, you know, you don't know everything. Um, and, you know, you just give it your best shot. I have a dream forum on here. This is uh, completely optional. This is something if you would like to kind of report your dreams and get other people's take on it, it is anonymous because I know that some people's dreams can be very personal. Um, and if you choose to, let's say you want to put your name out there, that's up to you, but it does, uh, um, it is a set to be a, an anonymous post. I also have some tips for you guys um, to record your own dreams and some um, information about the forum here. Now, as you can notice, I've color coded week one to be blue. And if you move all the way down, I'm just gonna kind of scroll all the way down through the lecture content, the, the readings, the forums, um, all the way down past the uh, quiz and the uh, first quiz, which is the syllabus quiz in exam one, through to week two you see is yellow. So all of the weeks are different colors and everything associated with that is associated with the color to make it a little bit easier to navigate through Moodle. Now, um, one thing that I do want to bring to your attention is that um, there, there, there's a lot of material on here, um, but some things uh, that I want you guys to do um, are listed as, as mandatory um, assignments. So <clears throat> one thing that I want to, uh, to get at here before I move on is this idea of the introduce yourself forum. So the introduce yourself forum is mandatory. This is, I just want to know who you are. I want to see that you've made a post and you know how to make a post. I want this to kind of feel a little bit more face-to-face -face than um, an online class. So I know not everybody is in the same place. Not everybody's in WISE. I'm not in WISE. Um, I know that a lot of you are kind of spread out. So this is just a way for us to connect to each other as well as you connect to me um, and just to kind of get to know you a bit. So if you don't do the Introduce Yourself Forum, that tells me that you're not contributing to the course and then you'll you'll be withdrawn from the course so please make sure you do that um, also the other mandatory thing is the syllabus quiz so the syllabus quiz is literally gonna be the easiest thing that you do in this class it's just to make sure that you've read the syllabus your the syllabus is a is like a contract uh, between you and 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 me um, to make sure that you understand your expectations my expectations from you and that there are expectations that you should have of me. So that information is available on there. It, the syllabus quiz is set up so that you just literally pull up the syllabus and the course schedule, you read through it, answer a few questions. Um, most of it's really easy. And if you get something wrong, you can try again. And of course, um, you have to make a hundred on it in order to, to stay in the class. And so you have a week to do it. And like I said, it's gonna be the easiest thing that you do in this course. So that's just kind of a quick rundown of Moodle. You can see there's a lot of different things on here, a lot of readings, everything is available for you um, to click on um, for the first week. 
Um, I'm going to show you guys the syllabus because there's some information that I want you guys to um, be familiar with on there. Um, so we're going to switch that to the syllabus. Um, one really important thing that I want you guys to know is that one, the I do recognize that the um, syllabus is long. There's a lot of information on there. Um, and, uh, and I know that. <laughs> um, I recognize that. Um, and so let's see if I can get the, here we go. I got the syllabus up. So um, there's a couple of things that I do want to point out. Um, some policies, like for example, um, I don't accept any late work because it is such a short semester. Um, if I were to allow you to submit late work, um, then that would mean that I can't get the graded work in back in time for you to either do the next part or to submit the grades. So um, in a normal situation, I know this is a pandemic, This there's craziness going on, people are in some really bad situations and it's not the the, the best of circumstances. Um, and it, if this were in a regular semester, I could be more accommodating, but because it is condensed, um, it, you know, unfortunately I can't accept late work. Um, I do want to let you guys know though, if there's an issue, if there's a problem, please let me know immediately. I'll do everything I can to help you and everything I can to accommodate you. But if you tell me five weeks later, um, there's nothing I can do. So because we move so fast, if anything pops up, you need to kind of let me know as soon as you can so that I can help try to accommodate you as best I can. But in, nor in, in this particular uh, circumstance, I'm going to have to be pretty, pretty, you know, set on, on the deadlines unless you have an extreme extenuating circumstance. Um, Another thing that I want to bring to you guys' attention is the suggested textbook. So in a normal face-to-face -face class, I usually suggest a textbook and say, hey, you know, we see each other all, uh, multiple times a week. Um, if you have questions, you can ask me. Um, for an online class, because we're not engaging so often face-to-face -face or, or even in virtually, um, I do suggest that you purchase the book um, because it's a good supplement to what you're learning and because I can't be there to, to answer all your questions all the time. Now, for this particular class, I do suggest the Stanford Sleep Book. It's a really good book written by William DeMent. Um, but I know that because it's such a short semester, you may not be able to get your hands on it very quickly. And it's also not the easiest book to get. If you don't get the book, it's not going to hurt your grade. Uh, I do have suggested readings in different chapters of the book. And I think that if you're really interested in sleep, that you'll enjoy reading it. It's a good text. Um, it's nice and sort of conversational. It's less of a kind of a strict, stiff book, um, like textbook. But uh, I do suggest that you get it if you can. If you can't, it's not a huge deal. Don't stress about it. The other thing that I want to show you is the sleep science book. So this one is edited by Holly Montgomery Downs. I, this is a brand, brand, brand new book, like literally came out last week. It, uh, I don't have it yet. I don't have a physical copy yet. I did contribute to this book. For a very long time, we have not had a really good introductory, comprehensive, updated sleep science or introduction to sleep book. Uh, now we have it. And I'm so excited to have this book, but I don't feel like I can assign it as a requirement because not everybody can get it right now. So my intention is to um, not necessarily assign required readings, but to provide you with some of that material as we go along. You might notice in the course schedule, um, I've, I've kind of indicated that I might add a few more readings if you have the book then um, because then I will actually have a chance to have read through the book completely. I've, I've seen a lot of it. I just haven't been able to actually um, physically have it in hand. So uh, don't stress about that book. If you can get it, that's super awesome. Um, I'm hoping to get it by next week. Um, but again, just, you know, kind of if, if you're super interested in, in sleep science, I really highly suggest that you, that you go ahead and get that book. Um, now, I also make, made a comment on the syllabus about the readings. I want to remind you to just do the best that you can. Some of them are very heavily science-based, but I do hope that you can look through them and get the main, main ideas. Um, I do have a lot of policies on here uh, and the breakdown of the course and the points, um, when everything is due, all of that's available on the syllabus. One thing that I do want to um, make a note of is that um, I do talk about plagiarism. And um, I might have skipped it. Did I find it? No, here it is. 
So uh, one thing that I want to bring to your attention is that you guys should not be working together on any of the quiz, uh, on any of the tests, the exams, on any of the material. Everything should be from your own self. Um, I uh, I don't encourage any kind of working together on exams or any of the assignments. If there's anything that I am okay with working, you guys working together, I will note that. But at, for this class, there's nothing that I have you guys work on as a group. Um, some of you might have taken my psychology of sleep course. There are some overlapping concepts, of course, as we talk about things like the history of sleep science and sleep in the brain, you're going to see a lot of the same things because that is the foundation for understanding sleep. Um, but know that this is a different course. There is different material. We go over different things, especially as half of the course is completely designed around dream and dream content and dream theory. Um, and the psychology of sleep course, I don't really get a whole lot into dreaming. So one thing that I really need to note is that um, there is something called self-plagiarism. And that is if you use anything from the course previous for this course, that is considered cheating and plagiarism. So you need to create things that are just for this course. Um, if you are, uh, you know, working together on exams, if you are taking things from the internet, not citing them. Um, if you're plagiarizing and cheating, um, I do take it very seriously. What I essentially do is give you a zero on the assignment. You can get an F in the course if it's really serious enough. And I tend to um, go ahead and report that to honor court. Um, and that is because I really do take um, this stuff seriously. So remember that everything that you put into the course, you know, everything that you, that you do to learn is, is for your own good. It's, it's, it's to make yourself better and to make you know more. So you get out of this course, what you put in. So I highly suggest that you really put the effort in to learn the material because, um, your sleep will be better for it. Now, the other thing that I do want to um, show you guys and talk to you about is the, um, the uh, course schedule. So the course schedule um, you guys can take a look at is uh, got all the readings on it by week. It tells you when everything is due. Um, most of the stuff is due uh, on Sunday. There's a couple of things like um, the sleep logs that may not necessarily be due then, um, but uh, everything is listed on the course schedule for you guys to, to take a look at. Um, I do want to warn you that Moodle does turn off the deadline once once it hits the deadline it's off so if you go into an exam um if it's set to uh, to to end at sunday at 11 55 p.m if you go in at 11 50 p.m on that day you have five minutes to take that exam uh so the exams cut off the deadlines cut off even if you have the window open it will cut off on you so make sure that you're not cutting those deadlines close put those deadlines in suggested deadlines in your phone to remind you and send you send you um ping you and send you little reminders so that you can make sure that you don't miss a deadline if you notice i have suggested completion dates that's to keep you at a good pace. If you wait till everything's due on Sunday, you're gonna feel very overwhelmed. So I really highly encourage you to do what you can to keep a good pace and to not um, fall behind. Make sure you work ahead if you can. Um, and uh, keep in mind that there are some things like the question form, for example, that you may not wanna work ahead. So every Thursday uh, you can, uh, uh, the deadline is Thursday. So uh, anytime between, you know, Monday and Thursday, you can submit a question about the material. And then on Friday, I'll answer it. So on Fridays, I do a Zoom live stream lecture where I answer all of your questions that you have. And so this is a, a not a mandatory. You do not have to come in on at live, whether you asked a question or not. Asking a question is extra credit. Um, if it's a good question, obviously not as what is sleep. Um, and uh, I answer your questions. And if you're on uh, Zoom and you are, you know, at 4 p.m., that's when I do the live lectures every Friday. If you want to engage in a discussion, or if I didn't answer the question, or if you have a follow up, or if you want more information, then that's a great time. If you're lonely and you want to chat about sleep, that's a great time to come in on a session and and, and talk about it. Um, if you know you're working full time, if you're not able to do it, if you forget, 
I will record the session so you can go back and you can watch it later after I've um, loaded it on Moodle, usually by Friday night. So I also use Zoom for office hours. Um, if you need to talk about your grades or the class or material, please feel free to make sure to uh, send me an email and I we can set up a Zoom session. Um, I do want to say that, uh, you know, I, I am very open to doing lectures on pretty much anything related to sleep. So if you are going through the material and there's something that's really piqued your interest, and let's say I don't have a lecture on it, ask me. I am more than happy to set up a lecture and do one on something that is, you know, even remotely related to something that we're that we're covering. Um, and so uh, I do in, love to engage in discussion. You do got you guys do have discussion forums each week. Um, and I ask you a few questions and then you're required to do a post and a reply to a student. Don't wait to the last minute to do those posts because everyone's got to wait on everybody else to do a post in order to reply. So to engage in a good conversation, make your post earlier in the week and go back and check that forum. Um, I do ask that you are please, please be kind. They're not anonymous. You're probably going to have a class with this person again in the future. So don't be a troll. Don't be mean. Um, if somebody has a different opinion or a different different, uh, you know, perspective, um, take that into mind, you know, uh, have an open mindset. I'm not here to change opinions. I'm just here to educate. And so if we all keep an open mind, even if whatever opinion you had from the beginning is the same at the end, at least now you're more educated on it and you've experienced someone else's perspective. Um, especially as we get into talking about our own sleep patterns and cultural differences, we really want to make sure to stay kind to each other um, and to try to keep in mind um, that you know not everybody's the same as us. Uh, I do tend to monitor, I do monitor the forum post, but I don't tend to comment on every single one. That's just because I like to for you guys to keep that conversation going and stay engaged, but also I do monitor to make sure that nobody's creating a hostile environment or anything like that. Um, so I really do enjoy reading all of your posts and reading what you guys have to say and how you're um, thinking about the material. And so I do look forward to doing that. Um, the last kind of thing that I want to um, talk about is just making sure that you guys know that you can email me with any questions. I'm here to help you in every way that I can. I do hope that you get a lot from this course and I do hope that you are able to take what you learn and actually apply it. Um, you know, there's a lot of of public health uh, education that goes into sleep in the sleep field. And I hope that you can take some of this information and help educate people around you, especially during this time. This is not a common time. People are sleeping differently because of self-isolation. People are experiencing things differently. And so add that into your discussions and add that into some of the um, things that you're thinking about and reading about. Um, make sure that you are working to critically think and apply the information to your own situation as well as what other people are going through right now. Um, so I look forward to a really fun semester. I wish you all the best and I will see you guys next week.